what I have promised to talk about the, the low dimensional spin systems and quantum magnetism. See, in spin systems, what I am showing here, these uh, circles with an arrow, they are the pictorial representation of atomic or ionic magnetic dipole moments. Now, this atomic or ionic uh, dipole moments, when they are kept in a temperature bath of T, so the disruptive energy is the, this thermal fluctuation that is KVT. So that, on the other hand, there, there could be exchange interaction between this uh, dipole magnetic moments that is Gij and it is a question of which one is dominating. Now, if Gij wins over, then at uh, below certain temperature, the temperature at which the, the KBT and Gij becomes equal, at that temperature, we see a thermodynamic phase transition and the magnetic system goes from uh, the disorder uh, system to some kind of ordered system with the regular arrangement of atomic or ionic dipole moments. So this is a uh, magnetic phase transitions where spin moments, atomic moments get aligned along this. So this, is, this happens due to the reduction of temperature. But at a t equal to zero, means zero Kelvin, we do have always this uh, quantum fluctuation and most of the cases we do not bother about that, though it is always there. But uh, today I'll be talking about certain spin systems which are of uh, low dimensional and there the quantum spin fluctuations are very much important and we cannot neglect. And we will be seeing the magnetic phase transitions in uh, quantum reason. And of course, when you talk about the spin systems, uh, we need to bother, bother about two parts. One is the space dimensionality, whether it is 1D, 2D, or 3D. This is the conventional one, the macroscopic uh, magnetic uh, objects. And of course, the spin dimensionality point of view, it could be Ising, XY, that is two, only two spins, or the Heisenberg, where we have three spins interacting, JX, JY, JZ. And we know that there is a very famous theorem by Marmin and Wagner, which was given for Heisenberg spin, that there cannot be any long range magnetic ordering if the, if the spin dimensionality less than three, only for three dimensional space, uh, spin dimensionality for Heisenberg spin, where you have th all three components, there can be ordering. And of course, this is similarly, the table can be filled for other uh, uh, spin and space dimensionality. We have been working on several magnetic systems and uh, today particularly talking about the low dimensional magnetic systems and I must clarify the systems which you are dealing with, they are naturally occurring materials. They are not artificially grown like thin films or, or so. So now we have been working on several class of materials like uniform chains or dimer spin chains or trimer spin chains. even the are in two dimensional sense, the square lattice, it forms a square lattice or honeycomb lattice or Kagame lattice where the corner is shared, the triangle corner is shared, where the triangular lattice where the side of this triangle is shared. So spins are there at this, all these vertices. And when this kind of spin arrangement, you know, this, uh, if we deal with the Ising spin with a triangular arrangement and with antiferromagnetic exchange interaction, so if one spin is up, the another one is down, the third one doesn't know which way to align and it gives the uh, frustration and that uh, generates the degeneracy because uh, this, uh, there are a lot of uh, degenerate uh, uh, states at this uh, ground level. But of course, if one deals with XY or Heisenberg with this, then we we'll end up getting the 120 degree kind of spin structure. And similarly, for square lattice, if you take square lattice with uh, either it is ferromagnetic nearest neighbor extra interaction or, or antiferromagnetic nearest neighbor interaction, so if there is only first nearest neighbor extra interaction, uh, we do get uh, spin structure without any frustration. But of course, if you take the next nearest neighbor interaction uh, also into account, in some cases that can be significant, then the uh, uh, then the frustration builds up because uh, there is a competition between the positive and negative X interactions 
Similarly, for honeycomb lattice with nearest neighbor X interaction, there is no frustration, but if you include the next neighbor X interaction, then the frustration uh, is uh, sh shown uh, that, uh, th th that can lead to different kinds of complex magnetic phases. But for Kagame and triangular lattices, even with the ne first nearest neighbor X interaction, as I said in this case, there are frustrations and uh, that leads to several complex magnetic phases and interesting phases. See, one uh, very important uh, observation in terms of the quantum behavior in spin systems, which uh, we have been recently dealing with, the quantum phase transitions. For example, if, uh, if you deal with a spin up uh, system, and as a fun this is the magnetic field, externally applied magnetic field, and here is the magnetization, uh, which is the, uh, the order parameter for a magnetic phase transition, and it is with respect to the saturation magnetization, which can be so m by ms is one, this is the ultimate saturation, but for a, yes, it, that can be one third magnetization plateau, but from this plateau to this transition could be driven by the field. So basically in this case, spin goes from the ground state to the uh, next, uh, uh, next spin state, for example, plus up to three by two. So these are purely quantum uh, mechanical transitions in the spin system. So quantum fluctuations, the zero Kelvin fluctuation uh, is very, very important in this case. So that leads to quantum phase transition or even magnetization plateau of this kind of uh, nature. See, recently we wrote uh, a review article uh, the on uh, magnetic uh, materials because uh, involving neutron scattering because um, we very much use neutron scattering because as you know, we have the facility at the body research reactor. Of course, certain experiments we do carry out uh, abroad. Uh, so uh, there I have uh, summarized uh, lots of uh, such examples. So in today's talk, I'll be taking few examples from that uh, review article. Now first, if I consider a spin system, which is involving copper. See, copper is spin half, so this blue one, you know, and if we see, this is a copper layer, where copper forms this kind of coil lattice, and so, the, and these are the bro, bromine. Now, this copper layer, and this is another copper layer, and please look at the C-axis, crystallographic C-axis, and uh, this kind of crystal structure we get by doing neutron diffraction. We can draw this. So here the important thing to be noticed that the separation between these copper planes, which is the basically only the magnetic plane, so separation is so huge that basically this system can be considered, as you can, you will see that uh, quasi 2D system, spin system. And while we are dealing with uh, copper spin, that is spin half. So this is uh, very close to the theoretical system. You have copper spin half, it forms this coil lattice and there, uh, one can have exchange interaction between the first nearest neighbor that is J1, and one, also one can have second nearest neighbor J2, or even the uh, next nearest neighbor J3. So we'll be seeing that uh, uh, all three exchange interactions are important in order to understand the magnetic behavior of this kind of naturally occurring layered spin system involving copper spin hub, which is a very uh, good system for theoretical modeling. And by doing, uh, Newton diffraction experiment at 2 Kelvin, that is below the order in temperature, we do get this kind of, in the copper plane, this kind of, the spiral structure. See, you see the copper spin is uh, rotating in a spiral manner, and this is called propagation vector, and what I have plotted here, 4A by 8B, A is the, in the AB plane, and this is my C axis, so in the AB plane, 4A by 8B, you see what kind of spin arrangement is there with the spirality. But the important point is that the object moment for copper two plus, what we get by doing Newton diffraction at 2K, it is only 0.79 Bohr magnetron. And copper two plus spin half, full moment, what is expected, one Bohr magnetron. So the reduction of this moment is due to the quantum fluctuation in this case, and theoretical papers are there. Uh, for extreme frustration for this copper spin half system, square lattice, one expects 0.6. So, so that means this is not the case of extreme frustration due to the zero point fluctuation, but it is very close to that. So we have also extended this magnetic phase diagram uh, in the magnetic, externally applied magnetic field plane. Uh, and what we see 
at zero field, of course, this is the anti-fermentary phase one with this kind of propagation vector, where, and then another anti-fermentary phase builds up with this uh, around two Tesla magnetic field, but with a with a uh, with a some component of ferromagnetic component, and finally at ten Tesla it goes to uh, beyond ten Tesla it goes to pure ferromagnetic kind of thing. So there is a phase coexistence of uh, ferromagnetic and and uh, anti-ferromagnetic over this. So this is in the um, uh, H2 plane. Now in this case to understand that there is a theoretical phase diagram which tells that. Uh, what is plotted here? The ratio by uh, that is J2 by J1. So J2 is the uh, second nearest neighbor. This is the diagonal one in the square lattice, and this is the J1 along the uh, edge. So depend upon the J2 by J1 ratio at t equal to zero for this spin half square lattice theoretical phase diagram given in 2006. That over this J2 by J1 ratio what one expects the pure quantum mechanical state that the spin liquid state. But what I showed you that uh, the structure, that the spiral structure. So spiral structure is not reflected in this uh, phase diagram. But uh, when you look at the literature, indeed, that there is uh, another model, which is called J1, J2, J3 model, very famous model. Under this model, this ratio of this J3, this is the this is the J3 up to the uh, next nearest neighbor, J3 by J1 and J2 by J1, this ratio over this, over this strength of J2 by J1 and J3 by J1, we do have this spiral structure. So our system, this copper spin uh, it belongs to the spiral class, that means this kind of extreme interaction. And we have uh, this, uh, uh, now we are carrying out inelastic, uh, that is magnetic excitations, to measure all these J values, and uh, that we'll be able to present in your future. Now I move on to the second example, where we have seen the quantum phase transitions from a spin liquid state to a spin glass state in quasi 1D, a spin 1 system involving nickel. Uh, here it is nickel 2 plus. Vanadium is uh, non-magnetic here. Of course, this is a held in uh, spin chain kind of compound, and just to uh, recall that in 2016, uh, this uh, Professor Helden, he shared Nobel Prize uh, for his work in this uh, kind of uh, materials. And here we have seen the quantum phase transitions, which I will be sharing with you. Now, this is a spin structure. Again, we draw after doing the Newton diffraction experiment. That is basically the crystal structure. So here, what is another point I am trying to tell you, that crystallographic structure, crystal structure dictates magnetism depend on the how the spins are arranged in a, in a crystalline material. So crystallography and magnetism, they go hand in hand. And this kind of crystal structure we have got, this is a, spy, a screw kind of uh, chains of NiO6 nickel octahedra, where nickel is in two plus, three digits, uh, eight states, so spin one. So here the magnetism based on the nickel uh, spin one, and these chains, these two chains, these chains are separated by non-magnetic VO4 and also SR2 plus. So that means magnetic screw chains, they are separated by non-magnetic uh, uh, layers, non-magnetic uh, units. And for this parent one that is without any calcium, this is a spin liquid state. There is no magnetic phase transition, which is uh, seen here from this. This is susceptibility measurement as a function of temperature, but after substituting calcium at this position of strontium, we do see for all compositions there is a magnetic phase transition. And we have established that this transition is due to the spin glass. So that means the chemical substitution at the strontium site, this is just the ionic size effect. I will come to this. We are able to go from the quantum spin liquid state to phase transition to the spin glass state. How it is possible? Because this system, it was already given in this phase diagram. This is our system. It is in the spin liquid state, but very close to this, uh, this uh, uh, phase boundary line. And so our intention was to move the system from the spin liquid state to the ordered state by some external perturbation. So in this case, what is the perturbation we introduce? We replace the strontium two larger ions by calcium two smaller ions. So we wanted to bring these spin chains closer. 
So in, uh, in order to have this J perpendicular, that is the interaction between two chains, and this is the J, the interaction along the chain uh, between two spins. So this we wanted to make stronger so that we go to this phase. And that is what we could uh, do it because, yeah, this is the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, A lattice constant and the volume as you see decreasing by substitution. So the chains come closer and that leads to the phase transition. And we have established by doing DC uh, magnetization as well as AC susceptibility with the frequency that indeed this is a spin glass state without any doubt. And of course, by doing Newton diffraction at the low temperature, we have shown the absence of any kind of magnetic ordering, what is expected for spin liquid as well as spin glass state, canonical spin glass state. The last example quickly, this is one quasi 1D spin one trimer spin chain system involving nickel. And this is Newton diffraction as a function of temperature down to 1.5 Kelvin. You see the satellite magnetic reflections are coming up and nickel one and nickel two, there are two inequivalent crystallographic sites and we see the moment, predominantly moment is along the crystallographic uh, C axis, but with little canting, that's why A and B components are also there. And this kind of spin arrangement, and these, there are two inequivalent sites, green and blue, and this, is, this forms one spin trimer, and there's interaction between spin trimer, and we are dealing with spin equal to one. And by, we do get the ordered spontaneous magnetic moment from Newton diffraction without applying any external perturbation, and that is the ordered parameter, and we see the how ordered parameter uh, builds up at this phase transition temperature, and this is the critical exponent study with the beta, and we see the second order phase transition involving both nickel one and nickel two, uh, these two inequivalent crystallographic sites with Tn equal to 15.99, Kelvin. But the interesting point, what I'll be showing you, that is there anything happening over this so-called paramagnetic state, disorder state? Answer is yes. For that, we have done more detailed Newton diffraction experiment at several temperatures, little above this QD temp uh, nil temperature, 15.9, and we do see there is a broad, there are broad peaks, shoulder, even above this nil temperature, that is 18 Kelvin, 25 Kelvin, and by doing this powerful reverse Monte Carlo simulation, we could, we could make meaning, uh, full, we could do meaningful analysis by taking this kind of uh, supercell eight by eight by eight, and uh, that gives us this kind of fitting, and finally it tells there is a short range magnetic correlation predominantly along the chain line along the B axis with this correlation length, which is building up much above this three-dimensional long-range ordering, and then it's the long-range ordering sets in. So this kind of rich information we do get by reverse Monte Carlo analysis. In this system, my time is up. We, there are both cases for manganese, there is a uh, spin, uh, this plateau, but for nickel, it is not there, and that happens due to this crossover from the spin half state to the spin three by two. At this magnetic field, there's a crossover, so it jumps to the as uh, next, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, next energy state, that's why this jump is there, the quantum plateau is observed here, and for that we have done powerful inelastic Newton's cutting experiment. We have measured all the J values, and by measuring all these X interactions between the spins along this chain, and between chains and between trimers, we could say, the, uh, understand why this plateau is observed, why it is not observed. So with this, I must thank my main collaborators, A.K. Bera and Clemens Ritter, and with this I thank all of you for kind attention.